the madman. Welcome to Trump Reviews, Witchwood Edition. And welcome to Trump Reviews, Trump Reviews, Witchwood Edition. You can also find out how the rating system works in the links below. It's a little bit different than how most people would rate them. Hey. I rate them according to how much play they're gonna see in the meta. And by the way, that is definitely the best rating system out there. How sexy. Starting with Druid, we've got Witchwood Apple. Originally thought to be completely terrible, it seems like this card might actually enable the entire hand druid archetype. And I don't think it's a joke. I think hand druid is gonna be a solid tier three. Potential will be tier two. Three stars. So I thought it would be tier three. Turns out it didn't quite hit that because the power level of all the other decks were better. And even after cube block and control lock get nerfed, I think it'll still do better than it. This card ended up being a one star card. And I am going to also be predicting what the star rating is for the upcoming about two to three months of this expansion remaining. If I call a card currently one star, assume that I will predict that it will still be one star unless I otherwise say so. For Druid of the Scythe, I just think that both forms are pretty bad. I don't see it happening, so one star. So it turned out that a three mana 4-2 rush was completely okay. That probably is one of the weaker cards in the current Spiteful Summoner deck, but Spiteful Summoner is a tier one deck, so this does get a five star rating. Probably the lowest of the five star ratings I can give a card, but five stars nonetheless. I think coming up with the Spiteful Summoner nerf, Spiteful Summoner Druid will fall from tier one down to tier two. My future rating for Druid of the Scythe is four stars. Witching Hour is a really interesting card. It is too difficult to get the exact minion, the exact beast that you want to resummon with Witching Hour, I think. I couldn't get it to work, one star. I knew it could summon Hadronox, but I also knew you couldn't put Spreading Plague and Malfurion into your deck, and I thought that would be enough to not make it good. But it turned out that Taunt Druid made some waves, uh, although it then disappeared shortly after. It's a little bit of a stretch to call Taunt Druid a tier three deck, but I'm going to call it that. Uh, so Witching Hour is going to be a four star card as a card that defines this Taunt Druid deck. I think in the future, so I'm a little torn on whether or not to rate it three or four stars on whether or not I think it'll end up being a tier three or tier four deck, but I'm going to rate it four stars in the future since I think it'll barely make it to be a tier three deck. Ferocious Howl. So I think all of these big druid cards actually live together and die together. So I'm rating this at three star as well, since I'm pegging the hand druid deck at tier three. So this ends up uh, being a three star card for a slightly different reason. It's because Taunt Druid sometimes, often, ran Ferocious Hell, and that's a tier three deck, so three star card. I think in the future, this will also be a three star card. Forest Guy, though, is going to be the one card in hand druid that I don't actually see being good, one star. Yep, one star, but noteworthy is that this card did see a little bit of play in Togwoggle Druid, in like an offshoot of Togwoggle Druid. Whispering Woods, alongside all of these hand druid cards, I think Whispering Woods is a really good addition. It'll commonly be summoning seven wisps on turn four. Well, hand druid never ended up being a thing, but the particular cards that reward cards in your hand, uh, turns out Ferocious Howl went to Taunt Druid and Whispering Woods went to Token Druid. Token Druid, not a major force in the meta. However, it was run in HCT at the very least. Therefore, I'll give it a two star rating. Uh, in the future, I think Token Druid is going to be a fringe deck still, even with all the nerfs. I still think it's weaker than all the other aggressive decks. So I'm going to once again say two stars. Boomstag, I tried to build an odd cost deck. It sucked. One star. Yep, one of the worst odd cost only card restrictions. One star. Dusk Fallen Aviana. Really tough to pull off. I think too tough to pull off. One star. Everyone knew this card was going to be a meme. One star. Bewitched Guardian. I think this card actually fits just perfectly in the hand druid as well. Three stars. Hand druid sadly never ended up being a thing. One star. And finally Splinter Graft. That's just too cute and I don't really see it in action. One star. Probably will never in the history of Hearthstone be good. One star. So that's druid. Uh, I see two main archetypes in druid. Uh, one is the spiteful druid from the past because spiteful summoner is 
hugely buffed with the old gods rotating out, so the 10 cost pulls have been greatly improved. And the other archetype I see is actually Hand Druid. There were two archetypes for Druid. One is the Spiteful Summoner deck, and then two offshoot decks. The one worth mentioning and the one that I actually considered a deck was Taunt Druid. Uh, tier 3, Tier 4-ish deck, and then finally Tier 4-ish deck of Token Druid. Hunting Mastiff. Hunting Mastiff is one of a long line of Echo cards that disappoint. One star. Yep, one star. Yeah, not very many Echo cards. Solid play, as I predicted. Ratchap. It's basically two mana do nothing a lot of the time because it can be easily played around if it ever comes into the meta. So two mana do nothing, I don't like it. One star. Yep, one star. Even though Secret Hunter and Spell Hunter was a thing. Uh, it just doesn't make the cut. Dust Caven Hunter I actually did think was going to be a good card, but I finally come around to this swapping in your hand mechanic. This was one of the cards that I thought was definitely better, but as is, if you're top decking and you draw three mana two five, oh boy, can you not really wait a turn. Two stars though, just because it might still see experimentation in this Baku Hunter deck. You know, actually completely right on, ends up being a one star card. Turns out Jungle Panther is better. One star. Toxmonger. I think this is a really interesting card. I don't think the Quest Hunter is going to be very good this time around, even with the support. So I'm rating Toxmonger two stars. Even though people tried it, it wasn't popular enough to even go up to two stars, so one star. Eldmaster Shaw is clearly really powerful. The stat line is extremely strong, the effect is very good, and it's a very strong effect on a high health minion. That said, I could not really build a deck that I thought was going to be that powerful. Uh, so I rate Shaw a 3 star card. So the only Hunter deck that ended up being actually viable was Spell Hunter, and unfortunately Houndmaster Shaw is not a spell. So 1 star, even though on paper it seems he seems really really strong, mid-range Hunter didn't really ever take off. Blast. Similar to Shawl, this is going to be a very good card in Midrange Hunter. Uh, one mana deal four, yes please. This could also be a great spell for Spell Hunter. I think it will see play there. Uh, I'm going to rate this a four star card. So Wing Blast ended up being a three star card, as a card that sometimes saw play in the tier two deck of Spell Hunter. I think Spell Hunter could actually rise to be a tier one deck, and I think Wing Blast will continue to sometimes see play in that deck. Actually, I will give the original rating again. Four stars. So three stars now, and I think four stars later. Dire Frenzy is a really interesting card, but all in all, I found this to be too much work. This is the type of card that I usually give two stars to, in the sense that I think people will try it out, and then they'll find it doesn't work. Uh, in this case, I think they're going to try it out and find it doesn't work so quickly that they're just going to drop it. So one star. I was wrong about how fast people would drop this card. The card sucks. And it's absolutely terrible, but it does, it had at least in, at some point during the um, period I was looking at, saw 1% of inclusion in decks, so therefore this is a 2 star card. In the future, I predict it'll be a 1 star card since people have finished experimenting it. Valbrood Skitter. Assassinate ain't very good. 1 star. Yep, 1 star. Carrion Drake. It's actually decent, but... Decent doesn't cut it these days. Carrion Drake, one star. And no, I don't think a Dragon Hunter deck works. A <laughs> Dragon Hunter, one star. Which brings us to Emerus, one star. But do play Emerus if you really want to crush your opponent. One star, another very memeish card. Midrange Hunter gets a few toys Wing Blast, Handmaster Shaw. Spell Hunter gets Wing Blast. Quest Hunter gets reinvigorated with Toxmonger. A lot of interesting stuff. But is it enough? Turned out to not be enough. So basically the Hunter class is Spell Hunter and I think Spell Hunter is a better deck than generally the populace thinks it is. Uh, it's just old hat, old news, which is probably why it doesn't get that much popularity. But I think Spell Hunter will step it up a bit and Wing Blast will be in some of those decks. Midrange Hunter is still probably weaker than a lot of the other midrange decks out there. But someday Handmaster Shaw and Wing Blast will get their time in the limelight, I'd say. I think the big surprise is even though there is only one card that might make a difference in Hunter, and it's not even in the Hunter class, 
that card will be so impactful that it'll push a certain archetype of hunter up to tier one. Oh, what card are you talking about? Oh, I know. That didn't happen. Mage gets some very interesting things, starting with Archmage Arugul. Two mana, two two, uh, with a really powerful ability. If it's on the board, your opponent must kill it, otherwise you get so much value off of it. So therefore, I should rate Arugul four stars before moving on. This one is barely going to enter the two star category. Uh, did see nearly the one percent of play, and HCT Asia. Someone actually brought Archmage Aragul and Book of Spectres with a Murloc Mage deck. Never really caught on because the other decks were more popular. Where Arago really shines is with Book of Spectres. Uh, draw three cards for two mana, holy cow, we have never seen anything that good before. Four stars, Book of Spectres. Where is Book of Spectres and Arago going to be run? It's going to be run in some sort of minion heavy mage, possibly elemental mage, and then quite potentially other mages as well. <laughs> and it turned out other mage ended up being Murloc Mage. So... Yep, Book of Spectres ends up being two stars, and I still think it'll be two stars in the future. The fact that Murloc Mage, when Mage has no Murloc cards, and the Murloc cards generally are pretty terrible, has some amount of play, goes to show you that these two cards, once like better neutral minions or better mage minions come out, th this could really be a thing, Zoo Mage. So look to it in the future. The sheer amount of value you can get just boosts these two cards so highly. Snap Freeze! It's better Shatter, and still not very good, yet. One star. Yep, one star. Black Cat. I thought that Odd Mage was good before I even saw Black Cat, and then Black Cat was there, and Black Cat was absolutely amazing. I think Odd Mage is going to be a tier 2 deck, and so I'm going to rate Black Cat 4 stars. So to my, to my slight surprise, Big Spell Mage I thought was going to be stronger when it was an Odd, but Big Spell Mage just ended up being better without this Odd thing. So Black Cat ends up being one star, not having even seen enough experimentation to make it in the two star category, and in the future, still one star. Cinderstorm. It's arcane missiles with plus two missiles for plus two mana. Boy, is that a bad deal. One star. I thought it was a bad deal, but well, it turns out to be a pretty good deal. In a world where Avenging Wrath somehow got played, uh, which was plus three mana for plus three more missiles, I guess Cinderstorm suddenly looked pretty fair. So I'm going to give Cinderstorm a 5 star rating this time around as a card that sees play in nearly every single tempo mage. So since Odd Paladin might start to see an, a rise in play, uh, Cinderstorm should still be just as good if not better. Although if Paladins exit the scene then Cinderstorm will be less good. Vex Crow. I think this could be the next Flame Waker. This could be the card that tempo mages use in order to replace all of the secret synergy they lost. 5 stars for me. So I didn't see the Cinderstorm potential, but what I saw potential in was Vexcrow, and Vexcrow did end up being an offshoot of the Tempo Mage deck. Uh, I think I helped spur its popularity on in some way, so in some way, I write the news. Uh, and the best I could do was to bump the popularity of this deck to uh, just play it enough to make Vexcrow a two-star card. Common consensus is that this deck is worse than the traditional Tempo Mage, I feel like this has gotten enough experimentation that people will recognize that it's not good even in the new meta pretty fast, so I don't think it'll see that much play, so one star. Arcane Keysmith has a lot of versatility in that you discover secrets. Uh, looks like it go into a variety of mage decks, and for that reason I'm going to give it three stars, but I don't really see where it goes to be honest. I was a little bit surprised that it actually ended up going to big spell mage, but because it's commonly in big spell mage, a tier three deck, Arcane Keysmith uh, does get the three star rating, uh, as well as very occasionally being in Tempo Mage. With some of the other decks shifting around in power level, I think Big Spell Mage will actually rise to tier two status. So I'm going to improve Arcane Keysmith's star rating up to four stars. Curio Collector seems really terrible, one star. It was terrible, one star. Bonfire Elemental. Uh, I theory crafted up a Bonfire Elemental deck, an Elemental deck I mean, for Mage, and I think it's about tier 3. So I rate Bonfire Elemental 3 stars. Bonfire Elemental saw enough play to get a 2 star rating, but Elemental Mage seems to not be that good. Uh, probably still will be less good than a bunch of the value mages out there, so 1 star in the future. And finally, Toki, Time Tinker. 
Uh, clearly meant for some sort of grinder mage, some sort of control mage, but for those decks I consider a Whis better, and even Cinder Gosa should be better. So Toki, one star for you. Well, not only because of cuteness value, but actually because it's a legitimate option for a big spell mage. She saw enough play to get two stars, and I think in the future she will also see just enough play to be in the two star category. Even though I think Big Spell Mage will be a tier 2 deck, I still think Toki is a bad choice to put in that deck. The mage actually gets a lot of interesting tools. There's going to be an odd mage out there, there's going to be elemental mage. Odd mage seems like it's going to have a lot of overlap with Big Spell Mage, but Big Spell Mage will also be a deck. This, uh, this Book of Spectres, draw 3, it should be eventually really insane, I have to imagine. And I'm really interested in seeing whether or not Vexcrow is as good as I think it is. So yeah, Mage has three decks. I think leading the pack will be Tempo Mage and Big Spell Mage. And then the odd one here is gonna be the Zoo Mage of Book of Spectres, Archmage, Aragal. For Paladin, we've got a new secret, Hidden Wisdom. And similar to Rat Trap, it's one mana do nothing. One star. Yep, sucked, one star. Cathedral Gargoyle. Uh, Paladin currently doesn't have the support for this. Someday it could be good, but Dragon Paladin is currently not a thing. One star. Yeah, I'll hold on to that opinion. Someday it'll be good, but for now, one star. Sound the bells. So I'm a little hesitant to rate this card this low just because... Because apparently there's some murmurings from purple that this is actually a good card. You can spread it out as flexibility. I don't see it. So I'm going to rate it one star. And I'm prepared to be wrong, but I'm prepared to accept the rewards for being right. So... Aha! I was right! So it's always like good to look back at these things and be like, oh yeah, that card was obviously bad, right? But Sound of the Bells was a pretty highly anticipated card. Ended up not seeing play, even though it was an even card, by the way. Uh, so it didn't even make the cut in the best deck in the game. One star. Rebuke. Everyone has good memories of Lothab, but Lothab was good because the Rebuke came on a 5-5 body. This one could very well be two mana do nothing. I'm rating this two stars only because I actually think it'll see some amount of play, maybe as a one of in these aggro paladin decks before, in some decks, like enough decks before like getting phased out. I think I actually saw some amount of rebuke in like some tournaments that might be enough to call it two stars, but I think it's just not enough data. Uh, everyone clearly thinks it sucks and it didn't see enough play. So, one star. Dawn of Light for a deck to buff a card that's generally going to be some sort of tempo deck. Uh, tempo decks generally do not want taunt or lifesteal. It's not really that valuable to them. So one star on this three mana two five. Uh, yep, one star. The Glass Knight is a card that I can see put into many different Paladin decks. With Rallying Blade rotating out, uh, it seems like we're going to revert back to the good old True Silver Champion as our weapon of choice. And even with only that weapon restoring health, I think the Glass Knight is going to see play across a lot of different Paladin decks. I'm rating this a 5 star card, I think that a 4 mana 4 3 Divine Shield is just a strong stat line, even if you don't restore any health. When you have Kings, and you have True Silver, and you have Call to Arms, Glass Knight just might be a little bit too much to put in your deck. It was a 2 star card. Now that said, with Call of Arms getting nerfed, 4 slot opens up a little bit, and between Murloc Paladin, maybe some sort of other mid-range Paladin, I still think that Glass Knight could see some play. Uh, so I was torn a little bit to rate it either 2 or 3 stars in the future, I'm going to rate it 2 stars in the future. Bellringer Century, I think, rings in another era for this Call to Arms Paladin deck. With Bellringer Century and running like about 5 secrets, uh, even though they're all just classic secrets, and even though they're not nearly as good as Avenge when the heyday of Mysterious Challenger was around, I think Bellringer Sentry still carries the day. So I'm reading this card five stars. Ring in the new era of Paladin. So the new era of Paladin was actually run it, rung in by Baku and Gen instead of Bellringer Sentry. Uh, I'm in the unusual circumstance of where Bellringer Sentry decks actually have a higher win rate than some of the tier 2 decks, but still I'm forced to call Bellringer Sentry uh, Secret Paladin decks like a tier 4 deck just because other Paladin decks outranked it. 
And in the future, it will probably still be outranked by Murloc Paladin. So Battle Ringer Sentry gets a 2 star, and I think it'll fall to 1 star in the future. Prince Liam, which would normally never get this high rating, I'm also assigning a 5 star rating. Because I see the aggro paladin deck running the bell ringer sentry and then you apply the Liam on turn 5, it's your backup plan. I realize this is a pretty dangerous call, could be very wrong, but I'm sticking my head out on this one. Oh, well, turns out I was wrong. 2 star card. I wasn't that far off when you really think about it though, because if Secret Paladin has a higher win rate than some of the tier 2 decks out there, one could make the argument that Secret Paladin is actually a tier 2 deck and Prince Liam and Bellringer Century uh, do define that deck, which makes them legitimate 5 star cards. But because even an odd Paladin just overshadowed it by so much, uh, turns out to be nowhere close. In the future, probably 1 star card. It does about the same thing as Murloc Paladin, and Murloc Paladin just does it better. So, why play this deck, right? Is the essence of it. Ghostly Charger! I'm giving this a 2 star rating mainly just because I see some synergy with Ashmore. So, 2 stars for the potential, I suppose. I actually forgot this card existed. I've never seen it. Anyways, 1 star. Paladin just has too much good stuff, so I didn't even really see experimentation. And finally, Silver Sword. I think you should simply run Vine Cleaver instead, so I'm rating this a 1 star. So I guess what I missed was the entire even Paladin thing. Like, the fact that this was even uh, made it better than Vine Cleaver. Of course, even Paladin would probably run Vine Cleaver if it could. That said, though, it declined heavily in even Paladin popularity. Uh, I wouldn't even call it a tech option at this point. But anyways, it does end up being a two-star card. Uh, in the future, it's going to be one star because the only deck that would run it, even Paladin, will no longer exist. I think Paladin is going to continue to thrive uh, with this call to arm style of deck that uh, of aggression that they've built with some opportunity for some mid-range paladin action and perhaps an even paladin deck. I didn't even say the word odd paladin in there, but paladin got a lot of interesting new stuff, but none of them are the class cards. So the big thing to realize is that Witchwood did come up with two new decks for paladin and I kind of slept on them because you had to add in so many strange cards into the deck, like Raid Leader and Amani Berserker. Like, it's it was really hard to predict that. So it turns out those decks were better than Secret Paladin. Very cool card, Camellios. And I'm going to rate Camellios five stars. I see it has potential across so many different types of priests. Really strong in control v control matchups. And when you put this guy in Spiteful Priest, you can actually cast spells. So Camellios ends up being the overhyped trash that people, some people thought it would be, but like it was really up in the air. I was torn between staple and overhyped trash, and I didn't know which one it was going to be. Turns out overhyped trash is the answer. Uh, turns out that Shifter is Eris and Camellios, you did belong together. So two star card, having seen experimentation and then fallen off, and that's despite being in Spiteful like, despite kind of being a legitimate option, Controlled Priest as well as Spiteful Priest. In the future, people have realized that Camellios is overhyped, not very good, and it'll fall down to one star. Squashling, it's the Echo Voodoo Doctor. I don't think it's gonna work out. One star. To my surprise, this ended up being the best Echo card in the set. So Squashling is a tech option in Control Priest, popularized by Zeta Lut. Uh, I feel like Control Priest will be a tier 1 deck in the future, and I think Squashling will continue to be a tech option for it. Some people will run it, some people won't, so 3 stars now, 3 stars in the future. Divine Him! Uh, this card I know actually got a decent amount of hype, but I compare it with Circle of Healing, which costs 0, Binding Heal, which is still in, uh, which costs 1 mana and restores 5 health to a friendly minion and yourself. That doesn't really see play, so I look at Divine Him and I make a call that this is a 1 star card. Well, big shock to me, this ends up being a 5 star card and a staple in Control Priest. I guess the 6 health that you healed to yourself was just a big enough deal that I didn't realize. Uh, Control Priest ended up being a tier 1 deck, and I think it'll still be a tier 1 deck in the future, so 5 stars in the future also. Vivid Nightmare, super miracle priest style thing. I don't think that's actually going to work because there is another super combo deck out there which probably crushes like any other super combo. 
Uh, but just because of the possibility, I guess, and just because it's theoretically good with death rattle minions, I'll give it two stars. Oh, good call. So theoretically possible ended up being right. This is a two tier uh, two star card. The deck ended up being Divine Spirit Inner Fire. You played Stormwind Knight and then you Vivid. Uh, well, then you Divine Spirit Inner Fired it a few times. Played Vivid Nightmare on it and then OTK'd your opponent. I think that deck is fringe enough and bad enough that it will probably not see play in the future though. So I'm lowering my rating of it to one star in the future. Ports Elemental. That's a 5 mana 5-8. Five uh, there's some amount of drawback there. I'm not absolutely sure, but one star for me. Yeah, turns out it's a one star. I mean, really all I had to do was like a pit fighter as 5 mana 5-6 five, and it's like that never saw play. So would a 5 mana 5-7 see play? Maybe. Uh, so 5 mana 5-8, five, it's like one health over something that might see play with a drawback. Nah. Winter Moth is an odd cost restriction, and I tried building an odd cost pre and priest, and boy, did it suck. Uh, I think Glitter Moth isn't even good if it doesn't have the odd cost restriction, so one star. Yeah, clearly the worst card of all the cards that had the odd even cost restriction. One star. Even worse than Gloomstag, and that's saying something. Holy water. It's simply too slow. Anyways, one star. Yeah, one star. Blade in white. One of the more overrated cards in the set, in my opinion. Uh, even the Control Priest, I didn't really see getting enough value from Lady in White as a card that you had to play first for 6 mana 5-5 five, five, and then buff your other stuff. So, two stars. I think it's going to see heavy experimentation and it's not going to work out. Exactly right, two stars. It's all play just because everyone was like, ooh, Lady in White. And then it didn't work out. Coffin Crasher. This is a really hyped card. A lot of people look at how good Possessed Lackey is, and I'm loath to make the same mistake as I did with Possessed Lackey. I call it Possessed Lackey a one star card. But this time around, I'm going to once again take a chance and say that Coffin Crasher, like Lady in White, is going to see experimentation. People are going to see that that Spiteful Summoner Priest is way better because. You have to have this, you have to have the big card in your hand already, unlike Possessed Lackey. I don't see it. Two stars! This was one, like, this was called the best card in the set by a few people. Yeah, it just didn't see play. And that's because Spiteful Summoner is better than six. And it's also because, unlike Possessed Lackey, it doesn't pull the death rattle from your deck. I actually overrated the card still. It didn't see enough play to even make it to two stars. So, one star. And finally, Night Scale Matriarch. Seems like a decent card, endgame dragon for the control priest. Uh, but there's so many other good dragons out there. I'm not entirely sure that the matriarch is the one that's being run. Two stars is my answer, because you can instead run a 7 mana 411 taunt. So, yes, this card actually did see enough play to make it into the two star category. It's certainly not going to again. So, in the future, one star. The priest doesn't seem like they're getting that much. I don't think the coffin crashing thing is going to work out. I don't think the lady in white thing is going to work out. Despite all of that, I think they still have quite a lot of viable decks. Actually, uh, Priest does get Divine Him and Squashling mainly as the tech option. I think Priest has pretty much one viable deck. It's Control Priest. But Control Priest is going to be very good. Rogue gets a new Burgle effect. Now you can pick opponent's pockets. And you can pick them a lot since this has Echo. But it turns out that it's too slow at pretty much every single mana cost that you could cast it on, it's inefficient. And even though there is some um, burgle type synergy, I don't think this is the card that sees play. Especially since I actually think there's exactly one Tempo Rogue deck out there that'll be good. Anyways, one star. This card actually almost reached 1% of index. So I almost had to give it a 2 star, uh, but it didn't quite reach there. It clearly is a bad card, but I guess uh, card appeals to enough players that players enjoy picking people's pockets. Uh, one star card though, and one in the future as well, as it's simply too slow and other value decks do it better. Cheap shot! I don't think it's any good. One star. Yep, this card sucked. One star. Face Collector. So this is an interesting one. I had this at one star for the longest time until I finally built a Tempo Rogue deck. And Face Collector actually combines really well with Tess Greymane. So for that reason, I'm actually giving Face Collector a 4 star rating. As I think that Tempo Rogue is going to be 
tier one, and I think Face Collector is kind of a stretch in making that deck, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stand by my bold prediction. Oh boy, was I a dreamer there! First of all, I thought that Tempo Rogue would run Test, and then second of all, I thought that that would be good enough to run Face Collector. Uh, so Face Collector ends up being one star. The deck that I'm describing is actually considered a Valley Rogue, and Valley Rogue has never worked out in the history of Hearthstone, but I keep trying and wanting for it to happen. Get through a Buccaneer! Well, for those of you who still want to play with your Kingsbane deck, uh, this replaces Naga Corsair. For that reason, I guess I'll give it a 2 star rating, even though I think Kingsbane is a pretty bad deck. I actually entirely forgot that Kingsbane decks existed. Uh, 1 star seems like everyone else also forgot. Probably because it's just not good right now. Blink Fox! Really efficient card, 3 mana 3-3 three, three, doesn't lose you card advantage. 5 stars! This is part of the equation that makes Tempo Rogue viable, I'd say. So the Tempo Rogue deck that ended up coming up was actually a faster version of the deck than I thought, and it's called Odd Rogue. And Blink Flox is conveniently odd and a good card. And as Blink Flox is in Odd Rogue, which is a tier 2 deck, Blink Flox ends up being a 4 star card. Mist Wraith, I'm very bearish on all of these Echo cards. I think the Rogue ones are not very good. So therefore, I'm going to give this card a one star. Yep, Echo Rogue turned out to be pretty bad. One star. Wanted! Even if Miracle Rogue were a good thing, and some pros are apparently calling Miracle Rogue uh, tier one with the rotation, I don't believe that at all. I think Miracle Rogue is going to suck. Almost regardless, at least. I think most people still think that Wanted is bad, even if they think Miracle Rogue is good. One star for me. Oof. Yeah, Miracle Rogue did end up sucking. And Wanted does end up sucking, it's not even in Miracle Rogue. Even though some people thought this would be the card that would make Miracle Rogue great again. Uh, one star. Spectral Cutlass. Even though I said Blink Fox is good, and that'll add a card from another class, and even though I think Hallucination will be played, I still don't see Spectral Cutlass as good. I'll give this a one star. Yep, this one's also one star. Cursed Castaway. Six mana deal five and kind of draw a card is a lot like Starfire, and that's why it should in theory not be good, right? But the combo cards in your deck tend to be really good. Filespine, SI7, Edwin, and I found that the particular Tempo Rogue deck that I built didn't have very many six drops in it. And I'm going to give Curse Castaway a three star rating as a possible card in this deck. If I look at this card again, I haven't seen her played in forever. It's like, yeah, she isn't that bad, but she didn't see any play. One star. And I could legitimately see Tempo Rogue running this card, but I mean, isn't Odd Rogue just better? So one star in the future also. And we round it out with Tess Greymane, uh, who is already an 8 mana 6-6, six, six, so before you see this, replay every card from another class you've played this game and think that you have to go completely wild, she's already good with just a few. Even though the Lich King is also run on 8, and I think Tess Greymane can stand by the Lich King's side. I'll rate Tess 5 stars. Eh, a little bit much. So, because other decks did value better, uh, a rogue that tried to get value just didn't cut it, so rogues ended up being a lot more aggressive. So Tess Greymane saw a little bit of experimentation, but then did not actually end up being the way that rogues went. So two stars. And in the future, I think Tess will be a one star card, because other decks still do value a little bit better, I'd say. So I think this is the great rebirth of the tempo rogue style of play. Teleseth on two still, and with a certain neutral minion, which is really, really good in rogue, and actually in my top ten list, and I've got some strong follow-ups. So Rogue ends up going to pretty much just Odd Rogue. Some fringe amounts of Tempo Rogue, some fringe amounts of Miracle Rogue, but those will probably both not be good. Maybe there's a chance for a Kaliseth Rogue to make a comeback, just because Kaliseth is pretty strong. Oh, and Quest Rogue, of course, I almost missed Quest Rogue. Yeah, that's a great deck. Uh, so good that it had to get nerfed. I uh, wasn't using any of the cards here, though. Exciting spells, zap. I think it's a pretty good card, but it's tough to fit into the specific Shaman deck that I think will be good. So anyways, at the end of the day, I'm rating it three stars. Yeah, so two stars. It's awesome play in even Shaman, it's awesome play in Shudderwalk, but not really enough play to give it the three star rating, even though it's in two decks.
Which is Apprentice. It's the babbling book for Shaman. And being a 0-1 instead of a 1-1 one, one is a really big deal. Enough of a big deal that I think it's only gonna be one star. Yep, one star. Blazing Invocation. Journey Below didn't even see that much play, even though it could be a rogue enabler. So for a similar reason, I don't think Blazing Invocation will see play. Uh, one minute tax to find something just isn't quite good enough. Anyways, Blazing Invocation, one star. The taxes are too high, one Spark star. Spark If you want to give yourself a headache, you can try to build an even cost Shaman deck. I don't recommend it. One star. Oh, this is the one I missed on. You can build an even cost Shaman deck. Now to be fair, the even cost Shaman deck ends up being like, at best tier two in the past meta, but Hey, this deck, uh, this card does define that deck, so it's actually five stars. Ghostlight Angler. Uh, at every single mana cost, it's a bad deal. Works for the Shaman quest, but calling the finishers is rotating out, so. One star. It's bad, one star. Frozen Might. Two stars. Card itself seems strong, but the Elemental Shaman deck currently is weak. And Kalos Death is actually better for it. So Earthen Might is a card that is run uh, somewhere between sometimes and most of the time an even shaman. Uh, enough that I'll call it a three-star card, uh, and not enough to call it a four-star card. I think in the future, as even shaman is predicted by me to become a tier one deck, Earthen Might will still be run in some of them, and probably enough that it's not just going to be a tech card and put it three stars, so Earthen Might, future four stars. Tell them Cruncher! It's really, really bad. One star. Yeah, and soft one star. I originally thought that this could be a one of an elemental, but after constructing the elemental deck, uh, I found it very low on spells. And I also found the bog shaper a little bit unwieldy. I'll just get it off of the servant of Kalamos if I need it, I suppose. One star. So bog shaper gets a two star rating just because it was in a few tournament lists. It's all small amount of popularity because you ran it alongside Shutterwalk and Hagatha. Uh, I think that will die out in the future as Shutterwalk gets regulated. In the future, probably one star. Hagatha the Witch. Given her hero power, you certainly want to play it in a deck with a lot of minions, so it seems like a natural fit for Elemental Shaman. I did, in fact, put her in Elemental Shaman. Elemental Shaman I find to be a tier 4 deck. I'm putting Hagatha the Witch still at three stars just because she's really good in that deck, uh, but also because I think she has some potential in this Shutterwalk deck. So, turns out to be making the cut in the Shutterwalk deck. Uh, but not just that, she's an even shaman. I'd say she's somewhere in between defining an even shaman and it's really good. If I round in the fact that she's even in Shutterwalk shaman, I guess we can, in fact, Push her up to five stars. Ben Brode, you were right. It's too OP. It's too OP. Just the right amount at a five star card, I'd say, actually. And finally, Shutterwalk. Big game changer for Shaman. The way that a Shaman deck actually makes it to tier one again. So, whew, that was quite a mouthful, but needless to say, I think that Shutterwalk will be five stars. Well, I mean, he was certainly extremely popular, which is exactly what you want on a card like this. Uh, so, good job, Shutterwalk. You have established yourself in our hearts, and you required a change in Hearthstone to limit the amount of battle cries and speed up the animation. The Shutterwalk, I'm going to say, is like a tier 4 deck. If you were being really generous, it would be tier 3, but I think it would be too generous, so we're calling it tier 4. Uh, and it certainly defines that deck, so we'll add a star onto it, so... Three star card for Shutterwalk. Uh, three in the future, I guess, as I think it continues to be in a position where all the fast decks just roll over it, and it's not quite as uh, able to beat the fast decks as Quest Rogue was. Shaman class as a whole, I think, doesn't get that much stuff. Zap's gonna be pretty interesting. Shutter Shutterwalk is a game changer, and I'm putting the wild bet that Shutterwalk will be a tier one deck. Well, turns out that the Hearthstone team did do their balancing correctly, and Shutterwalk ended up not being the tier 1 deck that scourged the meta, although at the beginning of the Witchwood, apparently lots of people thought that it was going to be that deck. Uh, but the big surprise is Even Shaman is actually a thing. And with the nerfs to Even Paladin, I think Even Shaman takes the reins. 
Possibly. Witchwood Imp is a card that I seriously considered putting in the zoo, but ultimately I thought that there were better cards to put in, so I didn't end up putting Imp in my deck. Uh, I'm going to put it at one star. You can actually see my hesitation in the rating, but now that we've played a bit, I'm like, yeah, it's not any good. One star. Dark Possession. That's a card people have been talking about as yet another card that can fit into Cube Warlock since you just kill off your possessed cultist with it. But I think that's a little bit too specific, and discovering a demon is kind of terrible. So I'm rating this one star. So worth noting, even though Control Warlock and Cube Lock are both tier 1 decks and saw a lot of play, Dark Possession even then did not make it to 1% of decks. Uh, so Dark Possession is going to be a 1 star card. Didn't quite uh, pass the criteria for 2 stars. I'm almost tempted to call it in the future maybe a 2 star card though because Dark Pact is getting nerfed. So I actually think Dark Possession like this will be the time where it sees experimentation. Curse of Weakness, really unique effect. I thought this would be a pretty useful card, is maybe a one of in the cube block deck. So I'm rating it a four star card. Eh, I saw a little bit of experimentation early on. In theory it seems good because it basically makes your opponent not be able to attack for a turn and you spend your mana. But turned out Control Warlock and Cube Block had too many good cards in it and couldn't fit Curse of Weakness in the uh, one star. Ratcatcher, I originally thought this was going to be one of the best cards in the set, but maybe Taldorim and maybe Umbra are still just better than Ratcatcher. Anyways, I think Ratcatcher will be an interesting alternative, and I'm rating it three stars. Well, I'm glad you guys talked me down from this is the best card in the set to three stars. Turns out this card isn't even on the radar, so one star. And one in the future also. That's bad. I think that Zoo should run this card. And I'm rating it 3 stars because I think Zoo is going to be about tier 3. So Zoo does end up being a tier 3 deck. Uh, weak tier 3, but tier 3 nonetheless. And Duskbat was in the version that I played it in, but I understand that it's not actually in every single Zoo deck. So I'm going to say Duskbat is a 2 star card. In the future, I think Zoo will probably be getting a bump up to tier 2, perhaps? So Dusk Bat will be in some of those decks as well, so I'm going to say it's the 3-star card then. I don't think you should use Blood Witch with the cards that require that you take damage on a turn. It's just a bit too much work. So, 1-star. Yep, 1-star. Fiendish Circle. Ha <laughs> 1-star. Wow, not There's even no close 1-star. There's right now, it's 4 one ones for 4. Deathweb Spider is an interesting card. I just think that you might need that bit of healing at the end to recover, and a 4-6 lifesteal is pretty good. I was tempted to rate it a 1 star, but just seeing all the aggro out there, I was like, ah, alright, fine, 2 stars. A little bit too optimistic, ended up being 1 star, and 1 star in the future also. Win the Crow Skin, I think is a pretty good late game zoo drop. Play it, and if you survive a turn, you can get a ridiculous amount of value by recasting uh, any of your 1 cost cards for tremendous value. Try not to kill yourself with the Flame Imp, though. So, 3 stars, I think zoo is a tier 3 deck. You know, I never actually got around to running a Glinda Warlock deck, but I've heard that this is actually a fringe deck out there. It did see enough play to warrant a 2 star, and it is fringe. And finally, Lord Godfrey. Often will just be a 7 mana 4-4 four, four with a Twisting Nether effect that comes along with it that kills everything except Godfrey. 5 stars, run in your cube block deck, run in your control warlock deck. Yep, do that. 5 stars. Uh, continue doing that. 5 stars in the future. So all throughout my reviews I was talking about, oh wow, another good card for cube block. And yeah, at the, as it turns out, cube block gets a lot of great cards, but it only has so many deck slots that it can put in. So even though these cards are good, they might not actually make it in, other than Godfrey. Uh, well yes actually, only Godfrey made it in. Good call? Final class, Warrior. I thought this card reveal that I had of Town Crier was going to be one of the best cards in this set. And at the end of the day, when I was building my warrior decks, I put in the rush package, and the rush package was looking pretty good. It didn't have anything else in it. So right now, warrior's got the problem where the rush package seems good, but there's nowhere to insert it into. 
For that reason, even though Town Crier is an amazing card, which I would normally rate five stars if Warrior had a viable deck, I'm gonna have to rate three stars for now. Yeah, that's pretty much the sadness of Town Crier. Uh, Rush Warrior ends up being awful. However, a new champion arrived, and it's called Control Warrior. Uh, Control Warrior does commonly run Town Crier with a package of Rabid Worgen and Darius Crowley, because Control Warrior, well, the good version that I'm calling Tier 2, so Town Crier is in that deck, and therefore 4 stars. Red Band Wasp, on the other hand, is just a bad Rush card. Don't feel like you have to play all the Rush cards in your Rush deck. 1 star Wasp. You know, for a moment, I actually thought that I might be wrong on this one. Uh, because the statistics almost put Red Band Wasp into 1% played. But then people, you know, gain some sanity and it does in fact suck. Uh, one star. Warpath certainly seems like a great card for the Control Warrior. Will there be a Control Warrior this time around with Sleep with the Fishes rotating out? I'm not entirely sure. So Warpath, I'm rating a 2 star card just because I don't think Control Warrior is going to see play. I so Warpath is an interesting spot where the best control warrior deck is arguably the odd one with the tank up and Warpath unfortunately can't be played in that one. So therefore, three stars on this deck. Uh, in the future, I'm not entirely sure what warrior version will be best. Will it be a version which is odd or will it be a version that isn't odd or will both decks exist? Uh, given how good this card is, I guess I will optimistically raise its rating from the three stars that it's currently in to four stars. Woodcutter's Axe, great card, yet again. So I'm rating Woodcutter's Axe three stars. Normally under any normal circumstance, probably a five star card, but in this expansion, I don't expect Warrior to be any more than a tier three deck. There was actually, you know, a Warrior that ended up being in tier two. Uh, just didn't really have the rush stuff. Well, it did have the rush stuff. Surprise, surprise. Anyways, Woodcutter's Axe was not played in a rush deck uh, because it was even. Anyways, one star on this one because the Rush Warrior deck ended up sucking. And when I rated these cards, I was pretty much thinking, are these rush cards actually going to be in a deck? And I did not see the possibility of the rush package being two Town Crier, two Rabid Worgen, and Darius Crowley. Rabid Worgen. I found that one of the problems of the Tempo Warrior deck is it's lacking 1 drops, 2 drops, and 3 drops. So while normally Rabid Worgen would probably be a 1 star card just because of the severe lack of 3 drops, I'm going to give this a 2 star. Rabid Worgen ends up being a pretty big surprise because it's just very vanilla and very mass stats, but because Town Crier is good and because Odd Warrior needs the cards, uh, Rabid Worgen is in it. Four stars. Militia Commander, one of the cards that makes Rush Warrior great. And this is a great card, but given again that the Warrior decks seem to be tier three-ish, uh, three stars for this one. If you told me that Rabid Worgen was going to be played more than Militia Commander uh, before this expansion came out, I'd have probably thought you were insane. And most people would have thought you were insane, but that happened. Militia Commander, one star. Professor Root Hulk actually seems like a card that could be reasonable in a Tempo Warrior deck, but given the lack of 1 and 2 drops, and even 3 drops for Warrior, uh, it's tough to get started with a board and then continue the board with the Fester Root Hulk. So this time around I'm going to give it a 1 star card, but wouldn't, see, wouldn't be surprised if it actually saw play in a future expansion. Yeah, you know, this one I was actually very hesitant to give a 1 star rating to because it is a car that can grow, and it does have a lot of health. Uh, reminded me of Darkshire Councilman, but ended up being one star. Darius Crowley, clear five star card, but uh, no real deck that can support him at the moment. Interestingly enough, I actually think he might be good enough to fit into the Taunt Odd Warrior deck. So for that reason, I'm boosting this guy up to a four star card. Um, I'd say Darius Growly is on the edge of a 4 or 5 star. I kind of want to separate it from Rabid Worgen, which I rated a 4 star. And Darius Growly and Rabid Worgen being on the same level is like, eh. But we'll end up putting him at 4 stars also. It's like on the precipice of the 4 and 5. Uh, Deadly Arsenal just seems bad. Well, mostly because there's no support. You want to have an Arcanite Reaper Gore Howl pull with this. And then that means you're not running Blood Razor or the Woodcutter's Axe or the Fire War Axe. And that's pretty questionable, so one star. Yep, one star. 
And finally, Black Howl Gunspire. Uh, seems like you can do some pretty potentially crazy stuff with it, but it seems like it's just gonna be memes. So, one star. I was right on the memes also, one star. I feel like Warrior got a lot of great cards. Under normal circumstances where there was a Tempo Warrior or a Control Warrior, or any real good amount of warrior to put all these rush cards in, I probably would have rated Darius Crowley, Militia Commander, Woodcutter's Axe, and Town Crier five stars. But due to me thinking that the cap on the warrior this expansion is going to be tier three, which is an improvement because it rotated out a lot of cards and still sticking in tier three. Anyways, because there's not really uh, other good warrior cards. We're just gonna have to start with this in the next expansion. Uh, you'll see the package being run with hopefully good warrior cards. That's really close. Even calling Control Warrior Tier 2 right now is arguable. Darius Crowley, Town Crier, Rabid Worgen, they help make up the package that can fit into odd Control Warrior. And Warpath is a way for non odd decks that are controlled to actually play. Uh, the rush cards as a whole are correctly predicted to be mediocre, but there were some interesting warrior decks in this meta. Baku the Moon Eater. We didn't know if even Odd was going to be a thing. Odd is a real thing. Upgrading your hero power since turn one so that you can use it on turn two and then gain value every single even turn from then. Well, odd turns as well. And I think that the tier one deck that will be spawned off of this is Baku Hunter. Base Hunter being able to deal three damage from the get-go with their hero power instead of two. Taunt Warrior, all odd, doesn't lose that much, and you get the tank up from turn one. It seems like it'll let you survive until you complete the quest. Odd Mage, looks like it can generate ridiculous amounts of value with two mana, deal two damage. I think Baku is going to have a huge impact. Five stars. You know those times where you get the reason completely wrong, but you're still right in the end? That's one of these things. So, five stars. Defines Odd Warrior, uh, Odd Paladin is a deck, Odd Rogue, that's the big one I missed. So yeah, fantastic card, uh, did open a lot of different archetypes. Cauldron Elemental. Elementals are not really looking for something to buff them on turn 8. One star. One star. The Ranged Doctor. It's too slow. One star. I've never even seen this card, forgot it existed. One star. Galan Rail Guard, even though this card is... Fast. She's just a bit too slow and fragile in the 8.3 version. Anyways, there was some theory crafting of Lady in White, but I think the card itself is not strong enough to run solo. One star. I haven't seen you in a long time either. One star. Splitting Faster Root. It's a big card you could cheat out, but you pay too much mana for the stickiness. One star. For these, I'm pretty much doing the right explanation beforehand also. One star. Azalina Soul Thief hailed by many initially as a neutral divine favor. Divine Favor turns out to be pretty bad at 7 mana. 1 star. So I never would have imagined that this card is actually the card that you put into Control Warrior as a way to kind of finish your opponent or to refuel. Like that sounds so wrong on a lot of different levels, but it's what happened. So 3 stars? Things got weird. Countess Ashmore, she made it into my honorary mention for top 10 which kind of implies I think of her as 11-ish. That said, there are a lot of decks that can use her, and because she fits into Q-Block easily, even though I'm not entirely sure that she'll actually stay in Q-Block, uh, four stars. I think I've only seen this card played once against me, and even though I play a lot of decks, I didn't actually put Ashmore into any of my decks. It's one of those cards where I didn't manage to theorycraft anything other than Q-Block on, but I thought Q-Block would be good enough to potentially consider Countess Ashmore, but ends up being one stars. Seven mana, ten stats, Darkmire Moonkin, enough said. One star. Wait, this is a card? One star. Furious Eden. I did consider putting this in my odd taunt warrior, so I wouldn't be surprised if this actually saw play. That said, despite my lack of surprise if it does see play, I still think it won't see play. One star. Yeah, it actually was very close to being in taunt warrior. But one star. Morgan Abomination is also less bad than I thought, but I don't really see any deck that's going to make use of this, and yeah, that's a pretty expensive card. One star. One star. Wormguard has a 
monstrous for 11 as long as you're holding a dragon and pretty easy to hold a dragon by turn 7 I'd say. Uh, I give Wormguard 3 stars. Uh, I have him as 3 star because I've put him into my Spiteful Summoner deck which I've labeled a tier 1 deck but I'm not entirely sure whether or not he'll be a mainstay in that deck. That is pretty much the exact deck that it ended up being experimented in at first. Spiteful Summoner Priest. So 2 stars. And then one star since Spiteful Summoner is falling off the earth. And 411 taunt for 7 just isn't really that good. Getting a green main. Well, he's no Baku. But I still did look at every single class that could use Gen. And the two most likely that I see are Paladin and Warlock. Paladin looks like a fair deck. Which means it's probably not going to be great. Warlock looks like uh, it's going to be some sort of handlock type deck. And... I feel like it performs worse than cube luck. That said, there's a lot of possibilities out there for him, and if he makes it into multiple tier 4 decks, then I think this rating is accurate. 3 stars. Oh, you were so close! So, I did humor the idea of Gen Greyman in Paladin, but what I failed to do was consider the Amani Berserker tech, and like the Drygulch Jeller and whatnot. It's like, you needed the breakthrough of adding a Monty Berserker into your deck, to be honest. So, ends up being 5 stars. Uh, call to arms in all of your 2 cost minions ends up being really good. And this deck will collapse once call to arms is 5 mana. Uh, but again, Greyman will still be good because of even Shaman. So, 5 stars now and 5 in the future. Mossy Horror is going to be a decent tech card that you'll pull out if there happens to be a lot of minions with 2 or less attack. I could see it as a one of in quite a few decks tech card, which I will label as three stars. So Mossy Hara actually did pretty much exactly as expected. It's a tech card, uh, mostly druid type decks and controlish decks. Uh, so three stars now. I'll even say three in the future as well. Chief Inspector, just like Mossy Horror, uh, this rating of three stars for also the Chief Inspector is just these are great tech cards. I expect to see them in and out sometimes. Not just in this set, but also in future sets. But remember that my star ratings are for exactly this expansion. So this card actually saw absolutely no play uh, this time around. One star. But given that the next, uh, given after these nerfs, Tempo Mage looks to be an enemy, as well as potentially Secret Hunter, I'm going to throw the number again. Three stars is my prediction for the future. One more time. Let it ride. Nah, maybe too slow versus aggro mage. Okay, two stars. Two stars in the future. Oh, I feel so bad even giving it a two star now that I think about it, but we'll stick with two. Clockwork Automaton. People think that they can get their huge hero powers off, and I just think it's gross overkill. So I'm gonna rate this one one star. No, I don't think you should run it in your odd Taunt Warrior deck. Disgusting overkill and completely unnecessary. This is like the number one card everyone kept telling me to put into the odd Taunt Warrior deck when I built it. And though I didn't do it, uh, given that no one else did it, it is confirmed to be bad. One star thing. Dullmaster Dorian, really unique combo card. I think just a little bit too unique. And I'm going to end up rating Dorian a one-star card because there's no theory craft of this where it actually works. So there was actually a theory craft of it, which vaguely worked. Murloc Mage. You play it and then you play Book of Spectres. Uh, even the Zoo Mage typically does not run this deck, so one star. Luck Hunter. I had high hopes for the Warrior Rush package, but sadly, like I said in the class reviews for Warriors, I think the Rush package is good, but the Warrior class cards aren't very good, so I think any deck with this very good Rush package will still be tier 3 at best, so 3 stars, Muck Hunter. Huh, so this card actually didn't see play, even in Odd Control Warrior, where you were hurting on Rush cards because the Worgen was just thought to be better. So. Muck Hunter, one star card, and I think one in the future also. Rotten Apple Bomb. In the world of aggro that is about to befall us, I think Rotten Apple Bomb stands as the bastion of control to, to toss a speed bump in their way. And I think this is a decent speed bump. I'm gonna rate this five stars. Uh, four stars for Rotten Apple Bomb. A card that uh, I wouldn't even call a tech card, just a card that you. Uh, no, I guess it's a tech card. But it is a basic card that you put into 
a number of decks sometimes, but not consistently in enough of them to be five stars. Which would Grizzly is also a good anti-aggro tool. At the end of the day, I'm not actually sure which one wins out over the other. They both have advantages and disadvantages over the other, but Grizzly, I also rate five stars. So I wasn't sure about which one would actually be the choice. Uh, and Witchwood Grizzly probably wasn't the choice just because Cube Block and Troll Lock had a lot of cards in their hand. And I knew that going in, but I thought that there would be enough of the other decks out there. So Witchwood Grizzly is a two-star card. Uh, didn't see nearly enough tech prevalence uh, as much as Rotten Apple Bump. Also Inquisitor. That's a 1-6 for a 4. One star. One star. Life Drinker. I feel like this is the combo card that will kill your opponent as your uh, Shudderwalk deck, and therefore when this guy tags along with what I'm pegging as a tier 1 upcoming deck of the Shudderwalk combo deck, the Life Drinker will be 5 stars. So this card is 4 stars now, commonly run in Aggro Mage, but also in other decks, uh, such as Shudderwalk, and it's even run in Control Priest sometimes, like the Burn Priest, uh, where you just Holy Fire, Life Shrink, and etc. then. But in the future, I'm going to bump it up along with Tempo Mage's rating to five stars. Mad Hatter, two stars. Why is it not one? Well, I actually have a little bit of holdout hope that this card is actually good in Zoo. Also apparently has some possible applications in a Shutterwalk deck, which are going over my head at the moment. I think that's a terrible idea, but maybe Shutterwalk's gonna be throwing hats, I have no idea. So it turns out that Shutterwalk will not be throwing hats, but I did see Zoo, I did see a list out there, pretty popular one, which did have Mad Hatter in it. Very fringe though. Uh, Mad Hatter, one star though. And one in the future. Night Prowler, one star. Condition, I think, truly is too difficult in this case, unlike a certain sleeper card. Uh, what was I referring to? Uh, I'll probably get to it. Anyways, one star card. Uh, condition was too difficult, but... It took a while of thinking because when you can get out of 4 mana 6 6, pretty freaking good for the last set. Sandbinder! Oh, the creeper. Hit your wagon onto the Shudderwalk train because Sandbinder is going to be the card that makes Shudderwalk decks more consistent. So I rated this card very surprisingly number 5, I believe, in my top 10 list and 5 stars because it gets you the combo pieces in the Shudderwalk deck. The Shudderwalk was the only reason why I gave this a 5 star rating. Uh, because I thought the Shutterwalk deck would be so insane, it would be tier 1, and Sandbinder would be in all of them. Strangely enough, Sh Sandbinder is not even in Shutterwalk all the time now, uh, as it became less combo-oriented and more control-focused. Uh, however, where Sandbinder started seeing play was in even Shaman. And it's 4-mana 2-4, draw a good card from your deck. So, as a kind of sometimes card in the Shaman deck, we'll give it a 3-star rating uh, now as well as in the future. Skillworm. I see this as a card that's great in Spiteful Dragon Priest. Just because I'm not entirely sure that dragons are going to be the only way that Spiteful Priest is built, I've only rated this a 4 star. Which means that there is some doubt in my mind at least that maybe it actually doesn't see play. Well, in every deck that has dragons, you do see a Skillworm. Uh, so 5 stars. And it was because of Control Priest. Uh, since I think that Control Priest is still going to be around and still going to be tier 1. I'm going to give Scaleworm a 5 star in the future rating as well. Swift Messenger! Across a lot of different decks this card could see play. I didn't quite manage to peg down the spot for it, but every single time I was trying to look for a card with Ashmore, I was like, eh, I might as well put a Swift Messenger in. So, for that reason, I'm going to rate her 3 stars. I actually put her in the Spiteful Summoner Druid deck. And she was really close to being good there. So, anyways, one star card. Just didn't see enough play across all the decks. Unpowered Steambot. No, this does not make Lady in White good. One star. I did see Unpowered Steambot and Lady in White every once in a while. It was really bad. One star. Witchwood Piper. I admit this is one of the ones I could be sleeping on because I do see the potential in it. As highly as I rated Sandbinder for getting you the combo pieces of Murmuring Elemental or Grumble, Witchwood Piper could get you your Murmuring Elementals as the lowest cost in that Shudderwalk deck. However, because I'm running cards like Loot Hoarder and Thalnos in that deck as well, Witchwood Piper is not as consistent as that, and you can't fit in all of the cards in there. Uh, there are so many decks out there which could use this to draw the lowest cost minion in their deck, 
but across all of them I didn't really see much of a point in drawing the lowest cost minion as a better result than drawing a card. In the case that someone comes around and needs to draw the lowest cost minion then Piper will actually be good, but since I didn't see one, two stars. One of the obvious things you might think about Piper is pulling out your Keleseth. Uh, which could be the lowest cost minion in your deck, but if it is the lowest cost minion in your deck, you're not doing the Tempo Keleseth deck right, for one. For two, Piper playing in a Tempo deck, uh, you've played a 4-mana 3-3, and then 5-mana you're going to play Keleseth. Keleseth is only really good played early. I'm glad I mentioned that Keleseth bit. Uh, so many people have repeatedly been saying Piper Keleseth, but that's just awful. Uh, so people did find a thing for Piper to do. Drawing the lowest cost minion was useful in Control Mage, uh, because Arcane Artificer was an important card for them. So sometimes, uh, Control Mages ran Witchwood Piper. Also good in Even Shaman, because Even Shaman cards have their trademark card on two, the lowest card, the Eel. For that reason, it's three stars, and I think it'll be three stars in the future as a valid option, but not in all Mage decks and Shaman decks. You know, given that I actually think Big Spell Mage and even Shaman stock are both going up, I'm, uh, I'm gonna bump this up to four stars. Blackwald Pixie could see an inclusion in the Odd Taunt Warrior quest, uh, but I myself think that despite the stat line, despite this pushing the boundary of inclusion there, that it's not gonna quite make it. So I'm gonna rate her a two star card, but I'm ready to be wrong on that. Ah, completely correct. Exactly a two-star card. It was experimented with mostly in Odd Taunt Warrior, and then discarded. Also ready to be right though. Hench Clan Thug made it onto my top 10 list, and I think it's going to help carry Tempo Rogue back into the limelight. It's a three mana 4-4 four, four, which continues growing. Five stars. Yep, five stars. It is defining of Odd Rogue. Marsh Drake, also great in Rogue. You either play your Keleseth on two or you dagger on two, and if you dagger it on two, you play your three mana five four on three, and then you dagger the Drake Slayer. A taunt is a disaster for you, and I think it's worse than Hench Clan Thug, hence the lower rating of four stars. So yeah, Hench Clan Thug ended up being the card. Uh, Marsh Drake ended up not being the card, uh, though Marsh Drake was experimented at first. So Marsh Drake two stars and one in the future. Nightmare Amalgam. What looked to be a really flexible card in all tribes is actually a really flexible card and it turns out that dragons I felt like needed this because so many of the good dragons rotated out operative and historian. So I feel like Spiteful Priest needs this card to serve as a dragon and it'll see play in that. Four stars only because I'm not entirely certain whether or not Spiteful Priest will be tier 1 and whether or not the dragon path is the way to go, but I'm thinking it will be on both fronts, so maybe on all the cards that I'm like not sure on, such as Scale Worm and Nightmare Amalgam and Worm Guard, maybe they all end up being five star cards. Yeah, right for all the wrong reasons. Well, almost right for all the wrong reasons. The Nightmare Amalgam is a is always in Murloc Paladin, and Murloc Paladin is a tier one deck, so Nightmare Amalgam gets a five star rating. Murloc Paladin wasn't even on my radar when I did this first review because I thought with the two one-drop Murlocs rotating out, it would be dead, but it's not. And to Militia, four stars. It's an excellent card to put into Odd Warrior Taunt. I think Odd Warrior Taunt is going to be a tier two deck. Odd Taunt Warrior did not end up being a tier two deck. Ended up being a deck that got ousted by other decks, and I don't think it's gonna be coming back. So two stars as it was tried out and then one star in the future. Pumpkin Peasant, three mana two four, or three mana four two lifesteal just doesn't cut it. One star. One star. Ravencaller, I didn't end up putting him in my hand druid deck even though I considered it, but Ravencaller does have a chance to be good in Quest Hunter at least. With all the potential of Ravencaller across these two things, I'm gonna give him at least a two star card. So hand druid ended up not being a thing and one cost hunter ended up not being a thing. So one star. Tangle Fur Mystic. It's a 3 mana 3 4 and it has a minor symmetric effect. The symmetric effect is broken in the sense that Hand Druid wants the extra card more than your opponent does, but not enough to warrant running this 3 mana 3 4 with a slight upside, I'd say. So, 1 star. I did think about running this in Hand Druid, so at least it was like in the memory banks, but 1 star, yes. Voodoo Doll. An interesting card that could see play across a variety of decks. Ultimately, I think maybe not in Q-Block, just because Q-Block is 
cutting the mortal coils highest probability in warrior with the blood razor and mage with the fire blast across these variety of decks that could use it and especially an odd mage which i think is going to become a tier two deck i'll rate voodoo doll four stars uh voodoo doll not really often run in cube block uh is run in control lock is run in big spell mage uh, because you can kill it with the fire blast but you can also make a water elemental out of it uh, ends up being a five star card because lots of can lots of control warrior at and in the future will also be a five star card uh, as it can be run in both warlock and mage walnut sprite it's just a three mana three three or a six mana two three threes or a nine mana three three threes one star one star which is cauldron just wasn't for any of my deck recipes one star saw a very brief amount of experimentation in baku paladin initially but didn't cut out uh, not enough experimentation to give it two stars one star Baleful Banker, in a surprise when I looked at the community ratings for cards, Baleful Banker was one of the higher ones. Uh, one star though, I just don't see this effect as being very powerful. Yeah, in normal circumstances this card is not powerful. Uh, Baleful Banker only played specifically with Glinda. Interesting, very odd deck. Uh, so ends up being a two star card, and I'll say two in the future as it will probably continue to be fringe. Lost Spirit. It's a two mana one one. You could pull it out with called arms, but you could actually pull out something better. One star. It's so aggressively bad. One star. Spell shifter. Two mana card with spell damage plus one hasn't historically been good. Otherwise, Thalnos would be run across way more decks. So spell shifter. One star. Yep. One star. Vicious Scalehide is a constant thought for people to run with Countess Ashmore, but I feel like this card is so bad that even though your Countess Ashmore could count this for either the Lifesteal or the Rush, or even both, that you still wouldn't put this in your deck just to be able to draw it with your Countess Ashmore because, oh no, you might actually draw him. One star. So Vicious Scalehide actually ends up being a five star card and is a reason, I, I was gonna say like a small reason, eh, not even that but small and not a big reason, but it's a reason why Quest Rogue was so good. It's a mix of Vicious Scalehide and a mix of the decks being particularly weak to Quest Rogue. Uh, sometimes you saw even Paladin play this card as well, like a one of often, to bring out with Call to Arms. Uh, however, in the future, given that Quest Rogue got a hit and given that even Paladin will be no more, Scalehide nonetheless, I believe will still be a five star card because it's going to be an even shaman with corpse taker to give you the lifesteal. Swamp dragon egg. Just like all the other eggs, it's not going to be good this time around, I think. Even though it's a little bit bigger. One star. One star. And finally, last and least, swamp leech. One mana, two, one. Lifesteal. So good for death, Dr. Rex, or bad to put into your deck. One star. One star. Rapid fire ratings, go! Splittergraft. One star. One star. Bewitched guardian. Three stars. One star. Duskfallen Aviana. One star. One star. Gloomstag. One star. One star. Whispering Woods. Three stars. Two stars and two in the future. Forest Guide. One star. One star. Ferocious Howl. Three stars. Three stars now and in the future. Witching Hour. One star. Four stars now and in the future. Druid of the Scythe. One star. Five stars now and four in the future. Witchwood Apple. Three stars. One star now. Emerus, one star. One star. Carrier and Drake, one star. One star. Wildbrood Skitter, one star. One star. Dire Frenzy, one star. Two stars now, one in the future. Wing Blast, four stars. Three stars now, four in the future. Houndmaster Shaw, three stars. One star. Toxmonger, two stars. One star. Dusthaven Hunter, two stars. One star. Rat Trap, one star. One star. Hunting Mastiff, one star. One star. Toki, time tinker. One. Two stars now, and in the future. Star. Bonfire elemental. Three stars. Two stars now, one in the future. Curio collector. One star. One star. Arcane keysmith. Three stars. Three stars now, four in the future. Vex crow. Five stars. Two stars, one in the future. Cinder storm. One star. Four stars now, five in the future. Black cat. Four stars. One star. Book of specters. Four stars. Two stars now, and in the future. Snap Freeze, one star. One star. Archmage Aragol, four stars. Two stars now and in the future. Silver Sword, one star. 
Two stars now, one in the future. Ghostly Charger, two stars. One star. Prince Liam, five stars. Two stars now, one in the future. Bell Ringer Sentry, five stars. Two stars now, one in the future. The Glass Knight, five stars. Two stars now, two in the future. Paragon of Light, one star. One star. Rebuke, two stars. One star. Sound the Bells, one star. One star. Cathedral Gargoyle, one star. One star. Hidden Wisdom, one star. One star. star. Night Skill Matriarch, two stars. Two stars now, one in the future. Coffin Crasher, two stars. One star. Lady in White, two stars. Two stars now, one in the future. Holy Water, one star. One Litter star. Moth, one star. One star. Quartz Elemental, one star. One star. Vivid Nightmare, two stars. Two stars now, and one in the future. Divine Hymn, one star. Five stars, and five in the future. Squashling, one star. Three stars, and three in the future. Camellios, five stars. Two stars, and one in the future. Test Grey Main, five stars. Two stars and one in the future. Cursed Castaway, three stars. One star. Spectral Cutlass, one star. One star. Wanted, one star. One star. Mist Wraith, one star. One star. Link Fox, five stars. Four stars and five in the future. Cutthroat Buccaneer, two stars. One star. Base Collector, four stars. One star. Cheap Shot, one star. One star. Pick Pocket, one star. One star. Shutterwalk, five stars. Three stars now and in the future. Hagatha the Witch, three stars. Five stars now and in the future. Bog Shaper, one star. Two stars now and two in the future. Star. Totem Cruncher, one star. One star. Earthen Might, two stars. Three stars now, four in the future. Ghostlight Angler, one star. One star. Dark Spark Eel, one star. Five stars now and five in the future. Blazing Invocation, one star. One star. Wish's Apprentice, one star. One star. A zap, three stars. Two stars now and in the future. Lord Godfrey, five stars. Five stars now and in the future. Glinda, three stars. Two stars now and in the future. Deathweb Spider, two stars. One star. Fiendish Circle, one. One star. star. Blood Witch, one star. <laughs> one star. Dust Bat, three stars. Two stars now, three in the future. Rat Catcher, three stars. One star. Curse of Weakness, four stars. One star. Dark Possession, one star. One star now, two in the future. Witchwood Imp, one star. One star. Black Howl Gunspire, one star. One Deadly star. Arsenal, one star. One star. Darius Crowley, four stars. Four stars now and four in the future. Fester Root Hulk, one star. One star. Militia Commander, three stars. One star. Rabid Worgen, two stars. Four stars now, four in the future. Woodcutter Zax, three stars. One star. Warpath, two stars. Three stars now, four in the future. Red Band Wasp, one star. One star. And Town Crier, three stars. Four stars now, four in the future. Baku! Five stars. Five Alternate stars. Elemental, one star. One star. Range Doctor, one star. One star. Galan Royal Guard, one star. One star. Splitting Fester Root, one star. One star. Azalina Soul Thief, one star. Three stars now and in the future. Countess Ashmore, four stars. One star, surprisingly. Dark Meyer Moonkin, one star. One star. Furious Etten, one star. One star. Worgen Abomination, one star. One star. Worm Guard, three stars. Uh, two stars now, one in the future. Gen Grey Main, three stars. Five stars now, five in the future. Mossy Horror, three stars. Three stars now, three in the future. Chief Inspector, three stars. One star now, two stars in the future. Bakwork Automaton, one star. One star. Doll Master Dorian, one star. One star. Muck Hunter, three stars. One star. <laughs> Rotten Apple Bomb, five stars. Uh, four stars now, four in the future. Witchwood Grizzly, Five stars. Two stars now, two in the future. Belso Inquisitor, one star. One star. Life Drinker, five stars. Four stars now, five in the future. Mad Hatter, two stars. One star. Night Prowler, one star. One star. Sandbinder, five stars. Three stars now, three in the future. Scale Worm, four stars. Five stars now, five in the future. Swift Messenger, three stars. One star. Unpowered Steambot, one star. One star. Witchwood Piper, two stars. Three stars now. Four in the future. Blackwalled Pixie, two stars. Two stars now, one in the future. Hench Clan Thug, five stars. Five stars now, five in the future. Marsh Drake, four stars. Two stars now, one in the future. Nightmare Amalgam, four stars. Five stars now, five in the future. Phantom Militia, four stars. Two stars now, one in the future. Pumpkin Peasant, one star. One star. Raven Collar, two stars. One star. Tangle for a Mystic, one star. One star. Voodoo Doll, four stars. Five stars now, five in the future. Walnut Sprite, one star. One star. Witch's Cauldron, one star. One star. Baleful Banker, 
One star. Two stars now, two in the future. Lost Spirit. One star. One star. Soul Shifter. One star. One star. Vicious Scalehide. One star. Five stars now, five in the future. Swamp Dragon Egg. One star. One star. And Swamp Leech. One star. One star. So I think that this expansion is more powerful than many people think. I've managed to see a lot of different decks that are going to rise into the meta. I've rated this set a bit higher than the last Kobolds and Catacombs set, which was pretty powerful. So all in all, I was too optimistic in this particular review, the actual number of five star cards in this set. 12, four stars, eight, three stars, 11, two stars, 26, and one star, 78. Calls of Dustwood might have been right after all, but Gen and Baku certainly created a lot of different archetypes and did what Blizzard hoped to achieve. Uh, though the neutral minions in this set were particularly disappointing. Nyak <laughs> 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 <laughs>